Have you ever heard the phrase, men want to be accepted for who they are? All right. Well, that's true for men and women alike. So this isn't singular to one gender. However, this makes me think of the Marilyn Monroe quote and how this might affect your relationship to actually feel accepted for who you are. So I just want to read this quote really quickly for everybody. It says, I'm selfish, impatient, a little insecure. I make mistakes. I'm out of control and at times hard to handle. But if you can't handle me at my worst, then sure as hell don't deserve me at my best. Okay. Well, as I look at that, you know, I, I look at a, a, a human being and certainly as a human being, we should from a compassionate place, from an unconditional place, accept human beings for who they are. However, I don't think bad behavior is something you should accept. So I want to pick this quote apart for a moment. I want to share with you some things about men that you shouldn't accept and then lean into the conversation of how accepting men for who they are in a different category might make you, might might <laughs> lead you down a path to a relationship success. And let me just say this, when men do feel accepted, just like you ladies, we also feel appreciated and respected for who we are. So let's lean into this quote for a second. I'm selfish, impatient, and a little insecure. Well, the reality is, is most human beings are a little bit selfish. They're self-centric to some degree. We, even in the dating process, oftentimes focus on our own needs first. We're not actually absolutely selfless in the early stage of dating. So I can kind of accept that. And even in relationships, we can sometimes be more focused on our own needs than another's needs. However, if it doesn't have the corresponding selfless added to it, if someone is completely selfish, well, that's to me, unacceptable behavior in relationship. I don't suspect you'd wanna be in relationship with a man who is absolutely selfish. Now, a little impatient, hey, look, I have a capacity to be a little bit impatient in life. Sometimes I get a little annoyed that it's taking forever for the waiter or waitress to come back to get my order and that sort of thing. I have a little bit of habit of impatience, but that doesn't necessarily rule my entire life. I'm a little insecure at times. I'm sure you're a little insecure at times. Whether you're a man or woman, you do want to feel accepted when you're feeling some doubt. Doubt is a natural human need to some degree. And what I mean by doubt, you know, under the six basic human needs, certainty is really important, but sometimes uncertainty is important too. So we can, and I'm using insecurities as uncertainty because the reality is, is humans aren't perfect. An actual unconditional love, accepting someone for who they are, is accepting that they might be insecure at times. Now, if someone is habitually insecure, habitually in fear, it makes them less attractive to be in relationship. The quote goes on to say, I make mistakes. Okay, we all make mistakes. I give you that one. I'm out of control and time's hard to handle. Well, that's not necessarily an attractive quality, be out of control and hard to handle at times. I would say someone who is out of control and hard to handle at times doesn't know how to regulate their emotions. And when someone is habitually in the space, and by the way, this was a quote from a woman, you know, there's this expectation that men are supposed to be the strong person. The masculine energy needs to hold space when someone is out of control. Well, do you want to hold space for a man who's out of control? Someone who's hard to handle at times? That can be exhausting. By the way, good morning. I hope you, my coffee mug says, I don't want to work anymore. I just want to be put up on a pedestal, cherished, or to be cherished, put up on a pedestal and taken care of. A friend of mine got me that. Excuse my slurping. The coffee is hot. If you can't handle me at my worst, then you don't deserve me at my best. Well, to some degree, we're all going to have bad days. So that's certainly an important aspect of a relationship. But to lean into that as an expectation, mm -hmm that you're allowed to fly off the handle whenever you want, and I have to accept it, I don't believe is a healthy way to be in relationship. So let's talk about, let's for a moment, talk about ways, behavior, men's behavior, you oftentimes accept, but I don't believe is healthy 
for the relationship. Let's start with, he's a lazy person. His top priority is leisure or playing games. Well, if someone's top priority is leisure or playing games and isn't necessarily focused on responsibility of supporting oneself as an example, and there's an expectation that you accept this man for who he is and you are the one that fully supports the relationship and he just gets to have fun and play video games all day long, I'm not so certain that's a healthy behavior to accept, okay? How about he's a flaky person? He's hot or cold. Ladies, many of you are accepting behavior from men who are hot and cold because you see that glimpse of where they're hot and you hyper-focused on that, and yet they can be corresponding cold at the same moment. And inconsistent behavior doesn't allow one to feel safe in a relationship. Men aren't attracted to women who are hot and cold and corresponding. I don't believe you should accept that kind of behavior from someone who is both hot and they're cold. But Jonathan, he's the most amazing man I ever met. There's no other man like him. I have to accept this behavior because he's the prize. He's the golden ticket that Willy Wonka was giving. Ladies, let me just say something about this idea that one person is perfect and yet you have to accept all of their bad behavior, their inconsistent behavior, their hot and cold behavior. Have some self-respect. Do not accept that kind of behavior. When I say self-respect, I'm saying self-worth, self-esteem, self-confidence self-reliance. If you're not familiar with my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. By the way, there's a link below to get a copy of my book. I'm here to say self-respect says I'm going to stand up for myself when this behavior is unacceptable because many of you are accepting behavior, bad behavior, feeling like that's how you respect men. And I'm here to say, stop it. Does his work or children take a priority in his life? Now, first off, I put this down. You might scoff a little bit at the children part, but I want to lean into this for a moment. Okay, certainly someone's work and their capacity to support themselves is rather important. And yet a healthy balance to life is a, is a life where you're spending time with those people important to you and you don't continually make work your precedent over and over and over again and dropping the people in your life is most important down to third, fourth, or fifth in your level of priority. And that includes children as well. I'm here to say children are important. Work is important. Those are, those are important things. So work's important. Your children are important. Your relationship is important. And when you set one so higher above in importance as a priority, and by the way, I've seen this happen with men and women where they've actually engaged in what's known as covert incest, where their children are such a priority in their life, they put their children on such a pedestal that it compromises all areas of their life. I know I was speaking to a woman recently. She told me that the boyfriend she was with, they were having sex. They were having their intimate date night, and he took a call from his daughter and all she wanted to talk about is his cheerleading outfit. And he went on to spend four hours talking to his daughter. And this is a man who talks to his daughter every single day. He compromised their time. And what she recognizes, she, this man had an unhealthy relationship with his daughter on an emotional level, look up covert incest. And women do this and men do this as well. But if there are other factors in their lives that are such a high importance, is that behavior you want to accept? I invite you to look inward for that one. Does he lose his temper? I was thinking of the Marilyn Monroe quote. My guess is she probably lost her temper a lot. I shouldn't laugh because she also had a lot of hardship in her life. I suspect that if someone's temper, if they're not able to regulate their emotions, and they go off the handle, they're hyper emotional, they lose their temper. Is that behavior you want to accept? Can you respect someone who, hand, who operates that way? I invite you to look inward on that one. Are his hobbies his top priority? Are his hobbies his top priority? Look at, I love to play golf, okay? I haven't play, played, I actually played the other day a little nine hole that was only took one hour, okay? 
For some men, some of their hobbies are such an extraordinary priority in their life that it actually compromises the relationship they're in. And I'm here to say where someone puts something so far above as their highest importance and not their, remember I said, work is important. Children are important. Hobbies are important. Your relationship are important. But to, to put them on such a high importance that it compromises what's, what to me is a healthy, balanced life isn't behavior that you necessarily should accept. And lastly, what about men who are high-functioning alcoholics, women as well? Is that behavior you want to accept? Because I'm here to say acceptance within, within the scope of healthy acceptance for understandable acceptance. Like I said, moments of making mistake. Of course, we all make mistakes. Are there moments where we're insecure? Absolutely. I believe those are things we should accept. And sometimes we're self-centric. We want our needs met first. That's a very natural thing in, the, in a healthy, happy relationship. But I wanna talk about acceptance in a different form that probably affects many of you today. And men who are accepted in these areas feel quite respected in their lives. So I'm gonna talk about financial acceptance because the reality is today, women are now in a completely different position that they ever were in society where they actually can, for really in the last 20 to 30 years, fully support themselves. There isn't the dependent need to be with a man for financial. Now that's not always the case, but I'm saying today we are we have seen this explode in the last 20 years, unlike the 200,000 years before. I want you to think about Neanderthals went back 200,000 years for 199,050 years. Most every woman was completely dependent upon a man. Actually, that's not true because women gave birth, so ba little boys were dependent upon women. <laughs> but they were dependent upon men. And so I'm seeing a shift where there are women who have a significantly higher nest egg, they have higher earning capacity, and some men that enter their life may not meet that social status or financial status. And I know three couples in particular where the women are, have significant worth, net worth, I should say. And these are men who are great men who are good men, they're good, they are good communicators, they are, they are good fathers to their children. These are all divorced people. Actually, one couple doesn't, neither one of them has children. In fact, one of the men gave a kidney to a total stranger. And yet his financial earnings and net worth was nowhere near his partner. See, these are women who accepted men. These are men that could take care of themselves. They're good, responsible human beings, but they accepted that they may be the major breadwinner in the relationship. And these are relationships that are flourishing. And yet a lot of women will look at men like in these men's cases and say, I reject them because I want someone better than me. That's just, a, that's just an observation I make, made. Now, there's the, the, the area that I wanted to lean in for this conversation most centers around the book, The Five Love Languages, The Five Love Languages. If you're not familiar with the book, The Five Love Languages, I highly recommend checking this out. The link's below. The Five Love Languages, this is the way we connect with our partner in our own unique way of the way we give love and show love. And the five love languages are words of uh, affirmation, although if you're a Leo, it's words of adoration, <laughs> um, physical touch, quality time, acts of service, and gifts. Now, what's interesting is I noticed that a, a significant percentage of men, their love language is acts of service. And a significant percentage of women, their love language is words. Okay, this is where oftentimes there's a disconnect between the two people, the partners. And in these particular cases, a lot of times women, because they desiring of the words, don't accept the man that his love language might be acts of service. And I'm just using this as the example. Okay, I know a woman I was talking to, potential client, was telling me about her boyfriend who does all these wonderful things for her. That's all these wonderful things for her. Fixes her sink, 
fix, put a tire on her car, made sure her car was running properly, hung up a TV, just things like that. And yet she was desiring of the words. And yet all of his actions demonstrated that he loved her. It's just words were difficult for him because in his childhood, he was stifled by speaking from an emotional level. And rather than say, I'm done with this relationship or create demands, what, we dis what I encouraged her to do was to accept him for who he is and begin a process of leading by example. Leading by example, by introducing words that were important to her in the relationship, making requests, and then watching little by little to see if you see, see a shift in behavior, if you experience a shift in behavior. Folks, acceptance is also the recognition that they, human beings aren't exactly the way you wish they would be. And yet we men are trainable. <laughs> we are trainable. Human beings are trainable. They have a capacity for growth. Now look, many of you are in relationship with what I call the users or spenders. If you're not familiar with my graph, the three types of people actively dating they're the uh, users, spenders, and growers. And by the way, they could be moving in any one of these directions. And I'm going to take this down because it's the glare. But the users, they are the seek the short, they, they seek short-term game. They're the love bombers. They're the players, the gold diggers, the entitled people. By the way, I was told gold diggers is out of date. Selfish people only caring for those needs. We're talking about not accepting that. The spenders, they seek compa connection, companionship, coupling. And sex, no direction, uncertainty, fearful, have usually a dysfunctional life. And lastly, lastly, the builders, they seek long-term commitment. They're emotionally grown up, good relationship skills. They have their act together. And some men are in the spender category. These are the dysfunctional men, and they're either moving towards a grower and builder, or they're moving towards using you if you continually accept behavior like what we just laid out. Especially the high functioning alcoholics, this came out during COVID. We saw a significant percentage of men and women that have now become high functioning alcoholics. Is that behavior you want to accept? Folks, I'm here to say, if you really want a relationship that flourishes, that where a man feels respected for who he is and you feel respected for who you are, it's gonna start by, from the very first date, leading by example and having deeper conversations, being radically honest with one another, laying your cards on the table very early on and establishing the rules of engagement. What I mean by rules of engagement is what is your standard? And if you don't know what your standard is, I gotta tell you, women, you are terrible at this. You all think you know what you want. And then they come to me, you know, they go through my clients, go through my proprietary coaching program, they all say the same thing. Why didn't they teach me this in school? Why didn't my parents teach me this? I didn't realize I didn't know what I wanted. And if you need help with that, folks, right here, schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with the coach is right for you. Though There's a link below. Folks, my area of expertise is to help you vet for these grower and builder so you're not continually dating these spenders over and over and over again. All right, you know what it is. Men feel respected when they're accepted. However, I'm here to say only respect those men with good behavior, good emotional maturity, good relationship skills. They have a level of empathy. They're transparent in their lives. Their actions ma match their words. They have victor consciousness and not victim consciousness. And most importantly, they have good communication skills that so when there's differences, you're able to navigate them with a lot more ease. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Please hit that thumbs up button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you're brand new. And by the way, again, all the links below to a discovery call with me to join my groups. Check out the description in the show notes. All right, those who know my format know I'm, this is time for Q&A.